Um, we're going to have a short webinar for uh, uh, folks who haven't joined us before. We do this uh, uh, once a month, just kind of a short, uh, quick uh, way to kind of show different topics from budgeting to um, AR. Uh, today we're just going to cover um, really a couple of uh, uh, neat things I think uh, users are aware that they can uh, do an inventory um, as well as uh, some of the utilities and inventory um, that should be run uh, whenever you notice things are out of whack. Um, and then finally we'll go through, um, I've just compiled a, a couple of items um, that I've used uh, in terms of um, handling month-end closing specifically it relates to inventory. Um, it's great when uh, everything balances and uh, for the most part I think what I'll cover um, uh, is essentially the process uh, when everything uh, balances. Um, of course, uh, when things don't balance, um, then we start looking at, you know, are there system issues to contend with? A little bit more tricky, a little bit more um, uh, tougher, but uh, uh, certainly um, there's still a process uh, when your inventory balances in terms of getting it closed and ready for the next period. So let's get started. Again, we kind of rehash some of the topics. Um, we're going to uh, go through the inventory table that hold information, whether you're looking at reports or, um, or really pulling information out of math. Um, I'll just show you uh, really the handful of tables uh, that store uh, most of the information and in inventory that you're going to use. Um, I'll show you how we can add uh, some additional information to uh, the item maintenance tab. Uh, namely, we'll, um, we'll look at one of the the transactional tabs and item maintenance, and um, we'll kind of see how we can add maybe user and um, and posting information to one of those tabs. Um, we'll talk about uh, when it's appropriate to use a rebuilt source utility. Um, also, one more thing I'm going to add is uh, when it's appropriate to use uh, the recalculate uh, balance of utility. Uh, so there are a couple of utilities in the inventory module. Um, that we'll take a look at. And then finally, um, we'll go through uh, the process in terms of how to close uh, inventory. Um, and we'll go through that in detail. Okay. So first, uh, the inventory tables that hold information. Um, and I'm using essentially uh, uh, MAPS version 4.5. Um, if you're using MAPS version uh, 4.3, the table names are a bit different, okay? Um, and certainly if you are, I can always shoot you over the um, uh, the old table names. Essentially, uh, the item transaction history um, used to be called the item 5 table, the item warehouse it used to be the item 2, and the item cost of the item 3. So, but in today's uh, version 4.5, uh, some of the uh, tables that you can pretty much get everything out of um, are listed here. The CI item table, if you go into inventory maintenance and you find the um, item description, the valuation type, uh, pretty much most of the information you find on those first two tabs um, in item maintenance, you'll find in the table CI underscore item. Okay. Likewise, if you run a detailed transaction report, you're going to find that information in the IM underscore IM item transaction history uh, table. Uh, and we'll pull that out in a minute so you can kind of see what you're getting. If you're running a stock status report, you can get that information in the IM underscore item warehouse table. If you're running an inventory valuation report, um, you can get that information using the IM cost table and the item warehouse table. Essentially what MAPS does is the item cost table will have all of your tiered, uh, tiered inventory information, your lot number, your serial serialized inventory, uh, as well as FIFO and LIFO tiers. Um, if you store any items using average or standard cost, you'll find that information in the item warehouse table. So, if you're running an inventory valuation report, whether it's in Crystal or Excel, uh, and you're trying to kind of replicate it, um, you'll actually have to um, find that information in these two tables. 
and then uh, essentially combine them to equate what you get in an inventory valuation report. And then finally, a, the lot serial transaction history table uh, essentially is a, a, a table that holds um, all of your uh, lot serial transaction history. So all the transactions related to lot and serial numbers are going to be housed in that table. Okay, so um, let's revisit this detailed transaction report and kind of get an idea of what we're going to see if we uh, pull that information out into Excel. I'm going to go into Excel. I'm going to do a database query. We've seen in some of my other seminars. I like pulling this information out into Excel. I'm going to go out. I'm going to use the ABC company. It has a fairly small amount of data manageable. And I'm going to go to the IM underscore IM transaction history table. If I open it up, it's going to have a handful of fields in that table. So I'm going to pull that whole table out. I'm just going to accept all the prompts. I'm going to push it back into Excel. And of course, Excel asks me to log in or enter my credentials twice. So this table essentially has our item code, warehouse, transaction date, transaction codes, which we'll also look at within NAS. And I'll kind of give you a list of what are all the different transaction codes uh, in NAS. We have an entry number. We have the fiscal year, fiscal period. So we have a lot of information in this table. If you were to run a, a detailed transaction report, um, you would essentially be getting all of this information um, just in a nice formatted report. But it's pulling the same information that you find uh, in this table, transaction quantity, unit cost, and allocated cost. Okay. Something else we have in this table uh, that you may not be aware of is every time we have a transaction, um, we have, like this is uh, actually coming from the sales order module, we actually have a date updated, a time updated, and a user updated key. Uh, now this user updated key is just a number. Um, if we wanted to, we can also look at another table in that to find out um, who number three is. Um, you know, every user has a essentially a, a user key, and this table is just stored as a key that we can always get to who that user key is related to. So we'll keep that in mind. We're gonna we're gonna look at how to add this information um, into item maintenance so that we can quickly see when that transaction was created and who created it. Okay. So it's just uh, some helpful uh, pieces of information in terms of um, uh, just understanding where that information resides in that. Pretty much you can get everything in inventory, um, at least in stock mass, from uh, these five tables. Now let's go back to a uh, couple of things. Adding information to item maintenance, and when we're going to be uh, using some different utilities. So let's jump into mass for a minute. We go into the inventory management module. We go to item maintenance from the ABC company. I'm going to pull up an item. I'm going to go into the transaction tab. And you'll probably recognize that this information I said is similar to what we'd find in the item transaction history table. These are transactions. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of pieces of information, like the uh, date that this was updated, the time it was updated, and then user. Okay, I can right-click on this area, and I'm going to go to Panel Settings, and I'm going to go to Customizer. Customizer allows you to customize the screen. You can customize it by user. You can customize it for all users. In this case, I'm going to customize it for all users and all companies. Now, I'm into the area of custom office that's specific to that one screen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this screen. 
So I'm going to go into the format section. Now again, we're getting into some kind of topics of custom office that uh, we certainly have seminars on uh, uh, some neat things you can do in custom office. Certainly you guys can always uh, uh, get more information uh, from one of our consultants on how to do this. But we're going to come over here. These are all the fields that are in that view. And you'll notice them at the bottom. If I click on Add, there's going to be a lot of other views from that table, the item transaction history table, that I can add. In fact, I'm going to add the fiscal year. Let's select. Put that at the end. But I'm also going to add the date updated, the time updated, and the user updated key. Okay, so I've got them at the end. If I wanted to move them up or move them actually to the left, I certainly can by moving them up. Um, so I can kind of customize how I want that screen. But at the very least, um, this may be useful if we just want to see the date, the time, and the user that updated this transaction. So now I'm going to go back into item maintenance and I'm going to go to my transactions tab. And now you're going to see that we now have three extra fields. Okay. And you know, again, um, probably won't go through it uh, in this session, but um, certainly keep in mind that there's a way for us to change the uh, last updated user to the actual uh, three-digit user. In our case right now, I'm logged in as ISM. Uh, and we can populate that uh, in this column. So this is kind of just a neat little feature uh, to give you guys some more information on, okay, this was posted uh, for 5-1-2010, but it was actually updated uh, on August 2009 by a specific user. Okay. Um, second, uh, one of the things we uh, certainly noticed, there are times uh, when math uh, gives you wrong information, <laughs> and uh, certainly, you know, the first thing you want to find out is, is, you know, is it just a calculation issue, or, um, or is there certainly, you know, some bad data in the system? Uh, certainly, once we find out if there's, you know, simply, uh, uh, you know, a miscalculation. When I say miscalculation, um, if I go to my quantities tab. And um, I have quantity on sales orders, so it's five in warehouse one, 12 in warehouse two. And I come down here and my total says 11. Then I know there's a calculation issue. Another calculation issue we might, might find is if I see that there's five on sales order, and I go to my orders tab, And um, and you know you may have to do some you know uh, uh, some analyzing and in, some inspecting, um, and you notice that the you know quantity on order um, in detail does not equal uh, the quantity on ordered on this tab, uh, and you you know you have reason to believe that this you know information is incorrect. Um, then essentially we're you know, our first route is uh, it's a calculation issue. Every time a transaction happens in math, um, multiple tables are uh, are impacted. Every time you process an order, every time you uh, process a, a purchase order, you do an inventory adjustment. Math goes and updates a multitude of tables. There may be a situation where one of the tables did not calculate correctly. So if it, it is a calculation issue, okay, uh, the first thing we do is we look to rebuild the sort. Okay, and I'll show you that in a minute. If you have reason to believe in the quantity tab that the on sales order amounts are incorrect, we're going to want to rebuild the uh, sales order calculations, or what we call in math the sales order sort. 
if we have reason to believe that the uh, RTO is incorrect, um, then we'll go ahead and rebuild the PO source. And then finally, after rebuilding the source, um, there's going to be another area. We're going to rebuild the inventory source. So there is a utility in Library Master under Utilities called Rebuild Source Files. And right off the bat, you do get a warning that says, you know, this utility um, uh, will recalculate uh, some balances. If you're familiar with Excel, you know that uh, sometimes in Excel, you might have cells that do not uh, add up properly. If you click F9, that will essentially recalculate your spreadsheet. Well, that's what this function in Mac does. It essentially behaves like an F9. Okay, it doesn't add um, field to math. It doesn't uh, take away field. It simply recalculates where it needs to recalculate. Okay, all of the utilities uh, in math essentially warn that this should be, you know, performed under the direction uh, of a representative. Certainly, if you are rebuilding key files, if you are re certainly reinitializing data files, um, certainly you should discuss that with us before you do. Rebuilding sort files um, is like an F9. So certainly, um, you know, when you're uh, comfortable with the system. Um, and you find that you've identified that a calculation is off, certainly you can you know, perform this utility. In this case, if we identify that a sales order balance was incorrect, what we would do is we would go into the sales order module, click on the ABC company, hit proceed. It's going to tell you do you want to recalculate the open sales order quantities in the inventory master file. That's exactly what we want to do. We're going to hit yes. After we're done there, it's always good to secondarily rebuild your inventory master file. Okay. So common utility, if you've done your research and you know that um, one of the amounts in your stock status report are incorrect, or if you're in inventory maintenance and you see a, a total balance that just looks incorrect, um, this is the first place we usually go. Certainly, another utility is uh, we have some, some uh, uh, calculations that are incorrect or we know that an ending balance is incorrect. We can go into inventory. We can go to utilities and we can recalculate item history. Now what this does is this goes from the beginning of time in your system and it recalculates beginning and ending balances. Um, I strongly urge you if you're going to have to perform this function um, that you do this possibly uh, after hours or when folks are not in the system uh, because this may take, depending on the, the size of your uh, detailed transaction table, uh, may take some time uh, for it to process. And you certainly don't want to lock folks out um, of inventory uh, while you're performing this. Okay, so certainly a couple of utilities um, that could be run if you notice um, something is off in your inventory. Now the second route is if those uh, rebuild you know, utilities uh, just do not fix your issue, then we start going the route of, you know, do you have some, some data issues or some program issues? Um, and that's going to, you know, usually take, um, you know, a consultant to help you guys understand, if, if, you know, uh, did something not post to one of the tables in math or um, do we have an issue, uh, you know, that we need to, to evaluate and address? Okay. Excellent. Let's uh, now go back to our topic. We went through adding uh, some information into uh, our maintenance tab, uh, also rebuilding sorts and recalculating inventory balances. So let's talk about uh, how to close inventory monthly. These are down. Some end of the month closing tips. Uh, we're going to you know, actually go into math and, and see these done, but uh, let's kind of talk about some of these. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to first correct negative tiers. 
for those of you that have uh, FIFO and LIFO, um, math does allow you to uh, sell into the negative. Okay. Um, so what essentially happens is um, uh, math will sell into the negative, will essentially uh, cost the item using the uh, uh, costing hierarchy. Um, and then subsequently, if you purchase or make an item, um, you essentially have negative tiers and subsequent positive tiers. Um, at the end of the month, uh, what you should do as you know, just part of uh, house, you know, housekeeping and keeping your inventory system clean, um, is run a negative tier report, which will essentially um, uh, reconcile or, or apply your negative tiers to any positive tiers um, according to the valuation type you specify. Now, there may be some times where you have to create uh, an inventory adjustment um, to adjust. If you uh, have a negative tier, uh, you sold into the negative, um, but you don't subsequently have a, a positive tier to apply to, um, then really you have to understand math, you know, thinks you have negative inventory, you're going to have to do an inventory adjustment um, to fix. Remove zero co quantity costing tiers and in inventory utilities. Um, this is something that you know uh, math uh, does do. Um, even though uh, you have um, uh, zero quantities on hand, um, there may be some tiers in your inventory file. Um, so to keep your um, uh, inventory clean. Uh, it's good to run this utility uh, because this comes into play if we run a report and we don't, uh, and we actually run it um, using the zero quantity costing tiers. Um, the report is essentially going to give you uh, erroneous information. It's going to give you information that you're just not going to be able to tie back um, to the to the GL. So I'll show you how to run this. Um, at the end of the month. Have a process for closing inventory transactions. This isn't so much um, a math topic, but certainly um, you just want to be sure that it's the end of the month and you have your um, uh, your sales, your invoices processed for the prior month. You have your receipt of goods processed for the prior month. Uh, you essentially are um, uh, you know, making sure that um, uh, you're counting apples to apples. If you're taking a, a fiscal count inventory, um, that you have a process that says um, that you processed your receipt of goods and you processed your um, sales invoices uh, so that you're counting uh, inventory properly. Uh, this, you know, certainly becomes a problem. Um, you know, when you do a fiscal count and you have large variances, so, uh, you want to be sure that. Um, you know, you've taken your uh, uh, PO, SO, uh, work order, and inventory adjustments uh, into account. Now, when you've processed these, you're essentially ready to start uh, reconciling your valuation report uh, or trial balance to your GL. Now, with 4.4, version 4.4, um, we have the inventory valuation report. This is a real-time report. However, with version 4.4, we can now run an inventory evaluation report by period and tie that back to the GO. Prior to version 4.4, um, you know that you used to have to print out your valuation report uh, at the end of the month and, um, and essentially make sure that there weren't any other transactions um, that posted to the prior month for you to be able to use that report to tie back to the GO. Well, as a 4.4, um, the tables are essentially, um, uh, we're using the detailed transaction table um, so that we can look at all the transactions up to the end of the prior month and use that to tie back to the GL. Uh, finally, run daily transaction registers to ensure that all of your GL postings are, um, uh, are in the system. Of course, you know that Every time you have a transaction, whether it's an inventory adjustment or a receipt of goods, um, it's posed to the subsidiary ledger. 
um, but you still have a daily transaction register sitting out there. So if we find that we're comparing our um, our valuation report or trial, trial balance to our GL and we're off, um, uh, the first thing we do is we look at the daily transaction register and we make sure that it's clear. Okay, um, Something you can get into the habit of um, at least at month end is going up to the GL and going to main and running the daily transaction register. And what you'll find is if there's any transactions sitting out there that have not posted yet, you will have essentially an entry. Okay, You can post it at this point. It's going to tell you, do you want to update the daily transaction register? Now keep in mind that um, the daily transaction register, even though you're updating it today, it still retains the posting date that the transaction uh, was intended to post to. So it's not going to change it to today's date. It's going to keep it at the date that that map um, was instructed to post it to. Okay? Uh, but until we update it, we don't see these transactions sitting in the GL. So definitely as, uh, uh, as uh, part of the month end process, definitely want to make sure that you don't have transactions sitting out there. Uh, because if you do miss it and you send out financials and then you come after the fact and uh, post the daily transaction register, um, well, they're certainly going to go back and, and update the uh, uh, and update the system for that point in time. So what we've had to do is, is talk to clients and say, well, um, if you've accrued for that amount, uh, you're going to have to essentially, you know, do another subsequent GL entry to undo what you've done. Okay. And then finally, I mentioned before, understand transaction codes for entries. Um, if you're in, you're running a detailed transaction report, or you're just coming in and you're researching transactions here, and you see IR, IT. IA, you know. Uh, we have a list here that I've compiled um, that should at least give you some information on um, uh, on what those transactions uh, where they're coming from. Okay, um, if you have you know an ID as a cost here adjustment, or if you have a um, uh, or if you have you know essentially a, a PO, which is pretty easy purchase order, or physical count, IP. You can pretty much use this to at least identify um, where that transaction originated uh, so that as you're researching, you can then you know, go back to the person that originated it and say, well, can you give me more information on why um, you did this you know, physical count or um, why did you do a, a transfer instead of uh, an IA in adjustment? So certainly you can kind of use this list just to give you information on um, uh, what the transactions are. Let me take a step back. As we go into math, uh, the first thing uh, we're doing, uh, as I mentioned before, is correcting negative tiers. Now in this example here, um, we have a FIFO item that we've over-distributed. Okay? Math allows you to go into the negative, so in this case, uh, we sold 15 units, and at that point in time, MASS um, math had that cost at $9.50. Well, you come in the following week, and you do a PO for 10, and then, you know, at the end of the month, you do another PO for 30, okay? So if you had a, a, a nice perpetual inventory system, really, that 15, um, would have costed somewhere between ten and twelve dollars, and not nine dollars and fifty cents. Okay, what math is going to do at the end of the month? You're going to be running a um, negative tier uh, adjustment report, and for FIFO and LIFO items, it's going to apply that negative fifteen first 
to the 10 because this is a FIFO item, and then the additional five at $12. So what it's going to do is going to essentially true up your system, and any adjustment related to this transaction essentially is going to hit the adjustment account that's set up in product line maintenance. Okay. So let's jump into math. And you're going to see that in the period end folder, there's a negative tier report. This report is useful because it's going to go in and it's going to tell you uh, if you have, essentially if you have negative quantities anywhere in your system. So in this case, it's going to tell us we have um, negative tiers of our FIFO items. And what's going to happen is, is um, just because we have negative items here, it does not necessarily mean that we're going to be able to apply it to a positive tier. It just tells us we have negative tiers in the system. Now, negative tiers can be FIFO, LIFO, LOT, or serialized items. Now, MASH should not allow you to go into the negative for uh, LOT and serialized items. However, um, whenever we uh, uh, have any third-party solutions or if we have some, um, uh, some uh, system issues, uh, we certainly do see this number uh, negative. And then what we do is, um, if it can't be applied to a positive tier, then we have to go the route of essentially doing a positive inventory adjustment to negate this item. Okay. But whenever we can, if there's a positive tier, we can essentially run this report. We can run in the negative tier adjustment report. The posting date, if it needs to hit the GL, is going to be the date we specify here. And we're going to hit preview. And it's going to say, OK, I've identified one item where I have a, uh, you know, a tier that I can apply it to. Okay, and in this case, um, the unit cost of the negative tier um, is going to be, you know, applied to the um, can be applied to the positive tier without, you know, any subsequent uh, GL adjustment needed. That may not always be the case, but in this case, it is. It's going to say, do you want to update the register? And of course, you want to update the daily transaction register, which in this case um, was zero. Okay. So certainly running a negative tier uh, adjustment or negative tier report and adjustment, um, kind of the first step in, uh, in essentially getting your, um, your system clean by the end of the month. We also talked about um, running a or clearing your zero quantity tier. Now, uh, let me kind of explain what happens. If you run in your report, if you are an evaluation report, you're going to see a section here that says print zero quantity cost tiers. Okay, Mass, there are times that Mass actually stores a zero quantity tier with a cost. If you end up selecting this, okay, you're going to have an ending balance. You're going to end up having an ending balance. Um, that may not tie to your GL. So you can come in and go to utilities and remove zero quantity costing tiers. And you're going to say, I'm going to remove them, you know, on or before the date uh, that I'm trying to close. And I'm going to hit proceed. And what that's going to do is essentially remove those tiers so that whether or not you select this yes or no, um, uh, you'll at least still have an ending balance um, that should match. Okay. Now, of course, while you're running this report, there's while we're in here, one extra option here, print zero balances. Certainly I say, well, let's hit no because if not, you know, if you hit zero balances for all of your items, you'll just end up with a report that's, you know, uh, very much uh, larger than uh, what you would have intended. With no, you at least have a comp compact report. 
So certainly running your um, running your negative tier report um, or doing an inventory to adjustment will correct your negative tiers, remove zero quantity costing tiers. It helps you out so that you don't run into any issues when uh, running your um, your valuation report. And then after that, um, you're essentially ready to um, uh, start tying your inventory to uh, the GL. Now, the reports used to tie to the GL um, prior to 4.4, you know, when you're in 4.3, uh, your valuation report was real time. Your trial balance um, was also used. Um, however, uh, now with 4.4 and 4.5, uh, essentially since our table behind the scenes, um, every time we have a transaction, they should balance. Um, we can essentially run a valuation report by period. We can run it not just for the current period, but we can go back in time. And we can preview it. And we should get a number that ties to our GL. If we find that we're still not tying, well, now we have to look at are there transactions that did not post to the current, uh, uh, to the current period correctly? Do we have any uh, transactions at the GL uh, that did not post correctly? So some of the common you know, areas are. Um, we go to the GL and we go to our inventory account and we research and we find out do I have any transactions here um, that do not uh, you know come from uh, sales order purchase order inventory um, there may be times that I've seen transactions originating from AP if they're originating from AP that means somebody posted directly into the inventory account outside of the inventory module so that's one way you know I've seen things come out of balance. Um, another way is, um, and this is usually during setup, if we come into product line maintenance, do we have our accounts set up properly in inventory, inventory adjustment? So um, you'll have to go through all of your uh, product lines to make sure that we don't have uh, an item posting to an account that we don't intend it to. Okay. Um, so certainly those are the more common areas. Um, certainly if you're still out of balance, then we start, you know, looking at the, you know, is there a system issue? Did did all the transactions for the month um, essentially post uh, to the GL? And the way you know we evaluate that is, you know, we start pulling uh, our item transaction detail table. And we start researching it by you know month um, to determine you know if those transactions made it successfully. Okay. Well, I think that's you know essentially what we had. Um, you know, it's just a short demonstration of you know some of the things uh, uh, you know that are, are useful within inventory, um, as well as just some of the topics you know that we've. Uh, work on with clients that may help uh, make your month end uh, uh, a bit easier to deal with. So Bryce, I think uh, at this point we can certainly you know open the floor to questions. Okay, Robert, it looks like we have one question from Tracy in the uh, chat box down below. Uh, excellent. Uh, so Tracy wants to know is there a way to set the time period used to calculate average sell prices, I like to shorten that time so it is more like FIFO. Um, you need to calculate average sales prices. I'm not sure I understand. So uh, the average price, uh, or uh, Matt has an item, uh, correct me, you know, if I answer this question, and it's not the um, and it's not satisfactory, then certainly let me know. Uh, but I think uh, I'll kind of explain the, I, the item cost hierarchy. So whenever math um, uh, processes cost of goods sold and items, 
it goes through an item hierarchy. So depending on if you are a, uh, a standard item, if you are an average cost item, um, depending on your valuation type, it's going to look at a myriad of costs. It's going to look at, if you're standard costing, um, it's certainly going to look at the standard cost, um, the cost for items first. Um, if not, it's going to look at uh, certainly uh, a handful of costs. If we go into um, uh, warehouse 001, we actually have an average cost for that warehouse. So Mass will look to the average warehouse average cost of that item, and if it sees zero, then it starts going down. You know the item average cost. Um, then if it's still zero, it goes to um, uh, the last cost. So there's a hierarchy of costs that Mass will go to to determine what um, the cost of goods sold is for that item. Um, but in your question, is there a way to set the time period used to calculate average sales prices? Uh, there just isn't. Mass, at every transaction, mass is, mass is essentially calculating uh, the different costs in this system. So we don't necessarily have a time frame that we could say, you know what, I want to use this month's average cost um, and then reset it. Um, yeah, there just isn't a way. And Tracy, if, if, if you're intending another question, uh, certainly let me know. Or um, if we need to have a, another discussion, try, uh, Bryce, we can certainly um, uh, you know, uh, have a follow-up discussion. Ah, Tracy, excellent. I guess that does explain it. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, just go ahead and type them into the chat box down below. Okay, well, while I'm looking for more questions, a couple of other things. Uh, Bryce did mention that um, uh, we will be having a user group. Uh, actually, I kind of mentioned a couple more things. We have our user group uh, uh, next month. We actually have um, uh, the product manager from Sage um, that will be going through um, uh, what essentially will be Instead of uh, uh, Math 5.0 coming at the end of the year, um, it's being rebranded as uh, Sage 2013. Um, so she's going to be giving kind of the road ahead in terms of the changes that are coming in the next version of Math, uh, as well as what does uh, you know what's on the horizon for the product beyond that. Um, so it's always good to have you know the uh, product manager for uh, uh, for Sage come and. Uh, kind of give our clients a um, uh, some good information of, of where the product is going, uh, not just for next year, but uh, really the next couple of years. Uh, we've got some um, uh, really some updates coming down the pike. We had our big user group last week, so we're going to be coming out with some good information on some reporting tools uh, that are replacing FRX, namely uh, Renovo uh, FYI, which is uh, really the closest FRX replacement um, uh, that we've uh, uh, analyzed. Uh, Sage Math Intelligence, which really is, is uh, becoming a, a really good reporting tool uh, since its inception two years ago. Uh, and then uh, BizNet, uh, certainly um, like SMI, it's an Excel-based uh, reporting package that uh, uh, we already have several users on. Uh, so. Uh, another good uh, reporting tool that uh, is replacing FRX. Um, and then again, we'll be discussing more with our user group. Uh, and as we get come close to the end of the year, we'll probably have uh, another demonstration of um, uh, Sage 2013. Okay. So uh, as well as we'll probably have uh, another, um, uh, well, several other webinars. Uh, I think once a month, I think Bryce will be coming out with. Uh, a calendar of future webinars, um, uh, but you know, just a nice 45 minutes of um, uh, uh, of some topics that you know you guys find interesting. If there's any other questions, 
Oh, there are not. So it's been a pleasure. If you guys have any questions, um, certainly uh, Bryce will have some contact information. And uh, Bryce, I'll forward you this um, uh, this PowerPoint presentation. I think the inventory transaction codes are are uh, always helpful to folks. Um, and uh, and we'll leave it at that.